Hi everyone, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my channel, Cineram. Uh, I am in progress on a video series on the films of Alfred Hitchcock. I've selected 30 films of uh, Mr. Hitchcock's to see and talk about on camera once I have. Most of them I've not seen before, a couple that I have. I'm just basically reacting to each one in turn. <clears throat> and um, I've uh, found it a little difficult to grab a few minutes when nobody else is home where I can shoot a video in this kitchen here where the lighting is good, so uh, that's why I uh, didn't post a video last week. But I'm going to make up for it by posting at least three videos this week. I'm going to post three uh, videos on films uh, as I take them in chronological order. Excuse me. Um, the Lady Vanishes is my current film. Um, and The Lady Vanishes, first of all, um, I believe that Sybil Shepherd was the star of this. Uh, I was wrong. Sybil Shepard starred in another version of The Lady Vanishes in the 70s. Um, I was under the impression that it was one of Hitchcock's last films. It wasn't. Uh, this movie came out in 1938, before Sybil Shepard was actually born. Um, it's uh, adapted from a novel called The Wheel Spins by Ethel Lena White. And I don't know whether or not the Sybil Shepard version is a remake of the Hitchcock movie, or if it's simply another adaptation of the book, but I would imagine... It's, you know, trading, obviously, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, uh, the good reputation of the Hitchcock film because it's still called The Lady Vanishes. Um, now, I was, uh, as this film began, I didn't know anything about it. Didn't know what the plot was, except that there's a, a female person who goes missing, perhaps? And I had a couple of different choices uh, as far as that goes. Um, since I wasn't really familiar with a lot of the actors from the day, I didn't even know who the main character was going to be. But as uh, it went on, I figured my choices would be um, Miss Froy, who's played by Mae Whitty. Uh, she went on to um, be in another Hitchcock film called Suspicion. Um, uh, uh, Lyndon Travers, uh, she plays basically a woman who's having an affair uh, and is riding a train basically with her, you know, a, a man who's not her husband, of course. Um, and Margaret Lockwood plays a character named Iris, um, and I really wasn't sure who, if any of these people were the main characters, but I figured one of them is a prominent enough female character that they might disappear uh, during the course of the story. Um, Margaret Lockwood actually is the one who's playing the main character. Her name is Iris, um, and Margaret Lockwood went on to uh, appear in an adaptation of Pygmalion in 1948. It's about 10 years after or uh, the Lady Vanishes. Um, you might know Pygmalion a little bit more commonly as My Fair Lady, the musical uh, with Rex Harrison. <clears throat> um, so anyway, um, as the story begins, we're in this fictional country. They've just had this avalanche. It's a European country. Um, there's been an avalanche, sort of like a ski resort kind of community, I suppose. I could be wrong about that, but a lot of people are gathered at this hotel because they can't travel anywhere. Trains are not operating. Um, and so many of the main characters are planning to take this particular train back in the direction of England. Um, a couple of them uh, are uh, a, guy, a couple of guys named Charters and Caldecott. Uh, and then there's um, uh, Miss Froy, who's a governess, uh, a woman whose job it is basically take care of kids and educate them, you know, such as it is. Um, there's Gilbert, who's a musician, and Iris, who um, is a woman who's uh, going to be getting married. Uh, she's traveling back uh, to England because she's going to be married to this guy, even though some of her friends say, maybe he's not that exciting guy, maybe you won't really be happy with him, etc. Um, but these are uh, some of the main characters. And along the way, they also um, uh, get a guy on board uh, named Dr. Hartz. Uh, he's played by an actor named Paul Lucas, who is in Judgment at Nuremberg and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That would be the Disney version with uh, Kirk uh, Douglas, who uh, also had Peter Lorre in the cast, who was in 39 Steps, which I reviewed earlier. <clears throat> so anyway, they get on this train, um, and everybody's got their little compartments, and everybody is, uh, you know, have their own little thing. There's the woman, um, uh, Lyndon Travers, uh, excuse me, um, Lyndon Travers plays. We never really learn her real name. Um, she's going by Mrs. Todd Hunter because the man she's traveling with is Mr. Todd Hunter, even though his wife isn't there and her husband isn't there. They're just this, the names they're going under. Um, they're debating, you know, about, you know, what to do about their future. Uh, Iris is, you know, hemming and hawing about marrying uh, this guy. Uh, Charters and Caldecott are big fans of cricket. Um, that's an English sport that's similar to baseball, if you're not familiar. Um, and then there's uh, Mrs. Froy, who's also going there, and she sort of ends up uh, becoming pals uh, with Iris uh, at the hotel the night before the train leaves. They're staying in this hotel for the night. 
Uh, and then they're all getting on this train, basically, to go off. So some of these characters get to meet and interact with each other at the hotel and either become friends or annoy each other. And then once they get on the train, uh, things take a turn when Miss Froy suddenly disappears, Miss Froy the governess. Um, since she was spending a lot of time with Iris, Iris was the one who's most concerned about her. Uh, she's like, what happened? What happened? Where's she gone? Um, she was sitting right here in this compartment. And they're sitting in a train compartment with, uh, like, three other people. But everybody insists that Miss Froy wasn't actually there. Um, the people in her compartment insist, and the conductor of the train doesn't have a clue, and the doctor, he never heard of her, and some of the guys uh, uh, who are also on the train who should have acknowledged that Miss Froy was there aren't for various reasons. The cricket guys, for example, Charters and Caldecott, they're like, well, if we, if we go along with this, if we say that this woman's missing, the train will be delayed and we'll miss the match we're trying to get to. They have their own sort of selfish reasons, even though they don't have any animosity towards anybody else on the train. Um, and when people are insisting, basically, that Miss Freud not only didn't vanish, but wasn't on the train to the first, for the first place, I thought to myself, oh, I know what this is. This is Flight Plan. This is the 2005 Jodie Foster movie when she gets on a plane with her daughter, and then her daughter vanishes, and everybody insists that her daughter is actually dead, and in the coffin in the storage compartment, instead of her husband. Um, <laughs> somebody is trying to gaslight uh, uh, Iris here. You know, what's going on? So, um, uh, Gilbert, the musician, um, who didn't have a very pleasant interaction with Iris at the hotel. He sort of becomes her partner in solving this mystery. They're trying to figure out there's a, uh, an illusionist, a stage uh, illusionist, uh, who's on the train as well, and maybe he had something to do with it. Um, they're just trying to figure out why everyone is is pretending this. And, and they're going, hey, you know, maybe you really, you got hit on the head earlier. She got hit on the head. There's a, a, a planter, basically, that fell off a windowsill and hit her in the head, and she lost consciousness. She was dizzy, disoriented. They're like, maybe this other person got on the train with you, and actually, you only thought it was Miss Freud because because you met Miss Freud at the hotel earlier. And she's like, no, 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 I know Miss Freud was here. I know what I'm talking about. Something has happened to her. And so this is the mystery. What happened to Miss Freud? You know, is Iris imagining this? No, of course not. Of course not, you know. Um, so what's going on? Why would anyone want to abduct this governess uh, and, and, and then pretend like she never even was here in the first place? Um, so doing a little reading about the movie afterwards, I uh, found it was actually a very successful film. Uh, and uh, voted, you know, one of the top British films ever made uh, in, in polls and such. Um, but the interesting thing about this film is the characters of Charters and Caldecott, who are played by a couple of guys named uh, Basil Radford and Naughton Wayne, um, they, uh, had, their characters had quite a lot of longevity because they were sort of comic relief characters in the movie. Um, and the characters themselves ended up being played by these guys in other films later on. And then when they couldn't play those characters anymore for legal reasons, they went on to appear as a duo in future films and other uh, television appearances as characters who were not actually Charters and Caldecott, but were actually very similar to them, you know, because it was a winning combination. They're very popular, well-liked characters. Um, in reading about this, kind of remind me of Jay and Silent Bob. No, they're not like crude like those characters, but they're sort of obsessive about cricket in the same way that Jay and Silent Bob are obsessive about, um, you know, weed or comic books or whatever. Um, but, you know, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, Smith and Jason Mewes, they would appear as Jay and Silent Bob in TV commercials, and they made an appearance in Scream 3 and, and movies that had nothing to do with the view of universe that Kevin Smith established. Um, and uh, the Charters and Caldecott characters also got their own spin-off series. They were played by a different uh, couple of actors at that point. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting that these two guys ended up being like the characters that end up carrying on, um, separate from the uh, success of the movie itself. Um, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I had uh, a lot of fun trying to figure out what was happening and who were the bad characters and who were the characters that weren't so bad. Um, as I said, I really wasn't familiar with any of the actors, so for a while there, I really didn't understand, you know, where the focus was supposed to be. And of course, I didn't know who, which lady would vanish, but also even who the main character was. Um, Charter, Charters and Caldecott, they're actually the first significant characters to have any kind of a speaking part in the movie. They're the first characters to really have substantial dialogue. Um, so I figured that they might be the main characters, but I was wrong about that. Um, and about a couple other things, though. Um, so this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this movie, and uh, it was a big success. The previous two uh, Hitchcock movies that I talked about uh, weren't that successful, didn't get a lot of uh, a business, uh, uh, even even um, the, uh, the 39 Steps, which is you know well-known now. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, at the time, it wasn't that successful. It's, you know, gained in reputation. But The Lady Vanishes was a big success, and that's when the studios over in Hollywood said, hmm, that's your hit, this Hitchcock guy, he's pretty good. We should uh, think about uh, getting him to some, make some films for us. And they did, of course. Um, that's my video for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, my next film is going to be Rebecca, which is not, of course, the recent remake with um, Lily James and Kirsten Scott Thomas. It is, of course, the Hitchcock version, which came out quite a while ago. Um, so I hope you tune in for that. If you'd like to see uh, the other videos in my playlist for these Hitchcock, uh, for this Hitchcock's, <clears throat> excuse me, this Hitchcock series that I'm doing, uh, down in the description below is the link to that where you can see any of them. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And if you'd like to also visit my Facebook page, you don't even have to like it. You know, I don't care. Just, you know, you can just bookmark it and you'll see all my new videos there. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.